So now that you've had some practice in writing congruent statements, let's go ahead and talk about how we use these to find missing angle measurements. Again, this is a lot easier than similar figures because we don't have to worry about being proportional. It just equals, well, if I know one side length, I know the other one. Um, I don't have to worry about setting up the scale or the proportion or anything like that. I can just figure this out uh, using a congruent statement. But as you probably guessed, uh, the first step is to write the congruent statement so that we know what matches up. So on the back of your note sheet, you have these two figures here. There are pentagons. The first thing we need to do is we need to write a congruent statement that tells how these two things match up. Rather than figure out, okay, if I need to know angle E with Z, whatever, how to, how, rather than trying to visualize that, let's write a congruent statement so this is already set up for us. Again, remember, the, the best thing to do is set up to pick two uh, points that really stand out. I'm going to pick E because notice it's easy to see that that matches with Z. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, across the top there, E, F, G, C, D. Now, when I do Z, the question is do I go to Z to M or Z to A? Well, notice M is 110 degrees, F is 150. F can't match with M, so it has to go, Z has to go to A. If, M, if F doesn't match with M, then it has to match with A. Well, now that I know I'm going from Z to A, I know R has to be the next one, and then S, and then M. So now I have a congruent statement. I can find these uh, lowercase variables. Okay, So I'm, I don't know these values, but I can use algebra to figure that out. First thing I need to do, um, notice x is right here. First thing I need, is this part of a, a side length or an angle measurement? Well, to, to figure that out, is there a degree symbol? Notice there's no degree symbol here. So I know that this is the measurement of line segment ZA. Notice ZA is the first two letters. That means it matches up with EF. So I can write ZA is congruent to FE or EF. So I now know that since those are congruent, that they are equal. So if ZA is 3x plus 2, EF is 14, and now I can just solve for x. Remember, the first step is to get the like terms together. So that means subtract 2 from both sides, divide both sides by 3, and x equals 4. You can pause the video to catch up if you need to. Next one is to find T. Notice T is in that upper corner there. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, circle that. Notice T matches with S. Uh, you might want to circle that. This, it has a degree sign next to it, so I know this is an angle. This is angle RSM, or MSR if you prefer. Okay, notice that matches. S is the fourth letter. C is the fourth letter in the other pentagon. So I know that angle S and angle C are congruent. So RSM, notice the last three letters here. I'm sorry, that should be a Z up there. I just realized my congruent statement is wrong. RSZ is congruent to GCD. And RSZ is 2T, and I know that has to equal GCD, which is 120, so divide both sides by 2, and T equals 60 degrees. All right, next, Y. Notice Y is up there. There's no degree sign there. It's on the first, uh, the first pentagon on the left. Let me erase some of this stuff so it's a little bit more clear. All right. Notice y minus 3. There's no degree sign, so I know that this is line segment FG, the second and third letters of my congruent statement uh, for the first pentagon. Second and third letters on the other one are AR. So FG must be congruent with AR. Notice AR is 10, FG is Y minus 3. So my equation here then is Y minus 3 equals 10. And then it's just do the algebra. Get Y by itself. Add 3 to both sides, Y equals 13. Last one, Z. Notice there is a degree sign right here, Z, little z. This is lowercase z, not uppercase z. Careful with that. Lowercase z is right there in the parentheses with angle A. Z divided by 2 degrees. There's a degree sign, so I know it. Therefore, I know it's angle A. So I'm going to write angle ZAR. The first three letters, notice the middle letter is the vertex. That's angle A. ZAR, the first three letters up above are EFG. So I know ZAR is congruent to EFG. 
Angle F is 150. There's EFG right there. So let me finish my mini congruent statement here. Notice each of these variables gets its own mini miniature congruent statement, EFG. So you know ZAR, which is Z divided by 2, equals EFG, which is 150, and then it's just multiply both sides by 2. And Z equals 300. So once I know the congruence statement, I can use this to find any of these different variables, any of these things that I don't know. I can use my congruence statement to figure that out because I can set up little miniature congruence statements that will help me set up equations, which I can then solve. Uh, you have a couple problems from the book that you're going to do now. Uh, that will help you practice this. Remember, uh, check the congruence statement before you write down your equation.